Hey everyone, welcome back to the gaming table. I just wanted to, hopefully this is quick, show you something I thought I'd get into. This is pieces from Federation Commander. Uh, if you've ever played Starfleet Battles or heard of that, this I guess is the more streamlined version. Uh, just reading some stuff about it, it's like they, the developers of Starfleet Battles went back and just kind of retuned the engine. So if you've played Starfleet Battles, then a lot of the com ideas, rules, concepts should be very familiar here. Um, I played Starfleet Battles, I mean, many, many, many years ago, back in high school. So almost 25 or so years ago that I played it. And I thought it was incredibly boring. Uh, maybe because I was young. I mean, it was like, I played it several times with friends because, I mean, ultimately I liked it. I liked the power management. I liked being in charge of a starship and, and you've got the minutia of details that you're in charge of and the space battle and you're firing your phasers and launching drones and all kinds of cool stuff. And I went on to play, which I thought was a better game, the FASA version, which was the uh, Star Trek Star... Starship Combat Tactical Simulator, something like that, huge name. That to me was a fun, funner, more fun experience for Star Trek. But Starfleet Battle still had, uh, I think, you know, obviously a lot more depth. The FASA game was very streamlined, but I just thought I just had more fun with it. Um, but then years later, I went and I bought the for myself because I just I did still like the concept of Starfleet battles. I liked the the check boxes on the the starship sheets, the data sheets and stuff. I just thought they had a lot more depth to it. So I bought the Captain's Edition probably back in 1997, and for Starfleet battles, and I wanted to like and learn to play that game, but the rule book is just so much it's uh there's a lot there and it was just me i had nobody that wanted to play it it was just me so i was trying to figure out how to play it by myself and that wasn't very fun and then you fast forward now from you know 1997 to 2019 and i said yeah let's go ahead and jump into something uh so not starfleet battles but federation commander so that, that's what brought me here now specifically what brought me here was just perusing war game vault and they had a PDF for the Federation Commander Academy. And that is a very small footprint version of the game. It's like 12 bucks, and you get the, they said it's the full 74 page rule book for uh, Federation Commander Klingon Border, which is great because I like the Klingons. And then you get, uh, you do get a Romulan ship, a Klingon ship, the Federation cruiser, and a Gorn which is great because I like the Federation versus Klingon stuff anyway. So this is just enough to get you going. There's one ship. You get the squadron scale version of the cruisers and the um, fleet scale. And I thought that was one thing that was very interesting to me is if you want to play just a couple ships per side, then they have like the, uh, I guess the squadron scale, which the ships are bigger, have more hitboxes and things. And then if you want to play larger actions where maybe each person's controlling three, four, five ships, they have the fleet scale. There's a lot fewer hitboxes, the ships are a little more crunchier, but you can command more at once. Um, having never played Federation Commander, I don't know how that will work out, but I'm just going to start by playing Squadron, just a couple. Now what we have here, this is part of the print and play PDF file that I got from uh, War Game Vault. I printed out just one space map sheet, you know, which is good. I'm glad. At first, I was like, "Oh, it's a white sheet with you know the hexes." And I was like, "Well, yeah, this would this would definitely use up a tremendous amount of ink if it was a black star field with white hexes." So I'm thankful they went this way. It's a lot less ink to use on the paper now that I think about it. Um, but just to, I might print out one or two more of these just to give me a little room to maneuver. But I think just for starting out, you know, one page is fine. Um, I also got a couple markers here. I did print off several markers. They got energy trackers and some other stuff here. So, markers. 
more markers. I feel like the uh, Tom Vassell on the Dice Tower. Here you go. Component drop. I can't really drop the PDF file without dropping my little computer, so I'm not going to do that. Now, to make these, just in case, because, uh, you know, when you get something off War Game Vault and it's a PDF, it's kind of a print-and-play adventure at that point. So I printed out the items in question. So I've got here, uh, this is the Gorn. So first I printed it out on paper. Let me zoom out a little bit so I don't have to struggle so much to find the camera. Uh, so I just printed it out on paper. I These were just the right size that... I printed about full. I didn't have to do like a fit to page, so I just did a full, full size. Uh, I just noticed that copyright 2007. So even Federation Commander is old. It's older than almost as old as my kid. Uh, so then what I did was I printed out on paper, cut it, and then I had it here. Oh, I lost it. Oh, here it is. Oh man, this doesn't have the the part I had. I, I set this out because I was like, oh, I'm going to show them how I made these and now I can't find it. Well, anyway, I had some thin cardstock laying around and then what I did was I just spray adhesived the printed area on a small section of my cardstock and then cut it out so it's not just flimsy, flimsy paper. Um, yeah, it's like a I'm not even sure. I, I think I got this once at Office Depot or something the I had something printed and I asked the guy if they had like some some cardboard thin cardboard because I wanted to make counters and he had this behind the counter and he just gave me a few sheets so that was nice I want to find something like that so I can purchase more of it so this gives your counters a little bit of rigidity uh, they weren't too difficult to cut out they'd still bend easy so this is not you know by any means high quality production stuff but that gives you like two counters uh, that you get actually per and then there was like a slip point and these are good I watched a guy doing a demonstration on how to play the game a little bit and these slip points and turn points are great uh, because as you move your ship you have to move a certain amount of hexes before you can do another uh, slip or a turn so you just put like okay I'm, I'm making my turn in this hex and moving so you put like the little marker there that way you can make sure you've move the appropriate amount of hexes before you make your next turn. So nice little little reminder things like that. Um, my goal eventually though is to move from the paper and actually go and buy from WizKids. I saw these on Noble Knight Games. I guess WizKids makes what's called like a deep cuts and they're actually the Star Trek starships for their WizKids games but they sell just the ship model miniature and they're like eight bucks now I could go down to the store and for three bucks more buy the full kit because they the my local store sells them for like eleven bucks so you can play the Star Trek tactics game so I'm kinda torn I think I might go to the store and buy the the tactics box only because by doing that I'm then buying a ship that can be used either here with Federation Commander or play it as its own separate tabletop game because you get all the components. Um, I but then I'd have to buy the base game for the attack wing. That's what it is, attack wing. So undecided. I'm, I I might just go with the uh, the deep cut ships. Anyway, then I could buy like several cruiser. You know, get a couple Federation ships. Uh, I don't know exactly all the ships they sell for attack wing, but I do know I, I could get at least a Constitution and a Klingon D7. So that, that's going to be um, you know a month or two if I decide I really like this. Um, that's why I got the Academy game, just the introduction game. So anyway, I got me some components that I can play with. Now, if I want to expand just this, the uh, War Game Vault also sells some additional Federation ships and Klingon ships. Now, obviously when I say additional, I mean I should say like different kinds. There's like battleships and big ships you can get. Because obviously with print and play, I can print off and make as many of these uh, Federation counters as I want. I just have a couple here to play with. But I would like variety, I think. Uh, just playing a game with nothing but cruisers might get kind of boring, visually wise. Now, the other reason I like this, because again, it kind of reminds me back to the Starfleet battle days. 
I always loved these um, data sh sheets, ship data forms, ship data displays, SDDs. I always thought these were great. Now this is Federation, Federation Commander, not Starfleet Battles. Starfleet Battles, theirs are usually take up the whole page and then it has some additional information like uh, weapons, you know, they're pretty complicated. Uh, but they, they put a lot of the information right on the page, but this is kind of what they look like. And this is what I always loved. I've always wanted more space games. And I have to admit, I, I've done searches, and a lot of games I find that are space games are like miniature games, and their ship entry forms are like line items. So they just have everything kind of in a list. But I really like this semi-visual representation of the ships and then the, the whole boxes. And so Federation Commander has that still, which I think is great. Um, but one of the core mechanics that has changed to my knowledge is like there's little things you don't have to do. Like I don't have to allocate one point of energy to life support. I think that was something I always had to remember doing in Starfleet Battles. And I always thought that was silly. I was like, well, that's like a given, a default. That, that should be just accounted into the life of the ship. I mean, my goodness, who wouldn't put points of power into life support? Because your crew dies that turn or something like that. Uh, so this did away with that. As far as I know, power then is all managed kind of on the fly. So you can start out planning some of your usage of power. And then as you play the turn out, you can see what your enemy's doing. And then you can adjust power uh, for movement or things like that as you play. Again, how that works exactly, I haven't read the rules, but that's another thing I found intriguing because I remember with Starfleet Battles, everything was plotted beforehand. And, you know, which is fine because that worked for the game system. I just always kind of like a commander being able to make some decisions on the fly and then the engineering teams and everyone work around that to fit the situation. So, um, also you don't have the full 32 impulses. Like there's 32, like or 30 or 31 movement steps, hexes you could do depending on the type of ship you have. But there's just a, a handful of impulses, and so I got that on another sheet here. The reference card. So instead of having like 32 impulses, there's like eight impulses that are broken down into sub impulses to, to track moving. So again, kind of simplified. That heritage is still there though, um, but from what I'm reading in, on forums and things, it does play a lot quicker, which is great because this is one of the things that just really kind of brought the boredom factor for me when I was younger playing the Starfleet Battles is because you had the referee and he'd be like, okay, impulse one, anybody moving? Most people know because uh, drones and things move that fast, but most ships were moving at like six or eight or something like that. So he'd have to call off every single impulse and then finally he'd be like, okay, impulse 10, yeah, I can move. Uh, and then, you'd, then you'd move one hex or something. And then you'd have to wait again for another four or five impulses. And, and it just seemed very, very tedious. But when you got to do something, it was like, yes, so exciting. I get to fire a phaser in this impulse. And then you'd roll and miss. And then it's like, okay, now I got to wait, you know, another 32 impulses to wrap around for the turn and come back. You know, so it was just some things that, as I remember it, uh, maybe the play experience at the time was a lot different. But that's how it felt at the time. It was just, it was just excruciating. Um, so I'm hoping this is much better. So as I learn and play, I think that'll be exciting to, to pick up on. Uh, and hopefully, you know, if it is fun or more fun and more exciting, I hope my kid will get into it. And then I wouldn't mind investing more in it. Right now, I'm just 12 bucks in. Um, I think, uh, unless, unless I tell you all about it and you all go buy it out, I think they do reprints often. But Noble Knight had the base game. It was like $60.00. You know, which I'll wait. I didn't want to spend 60 bucks if I could try the game for 12. I'd feel bad to spend 60 bucks and then decide, yeah, this is still just as corny as I remember. Um, and then here, again, I mostly just like the Klingon ships and Federation ships anyway. So I have just the Klingon battle cruiser in squadron scale and then the Federation heavy cruiser. Oh, I guess it's a battle cruiser for the Klingons and a heavy cruiser for Federation. Which is great. Those are 
the classic iconic ones anyway but like I said Wargame Vault has um, like a small federation pack for like five bucks it adds like five more ships same for like the Klingon so again some varieties now you do have to print one of these per ship because this will all correspond to one specific counter that you put on the board yeah. so one counter per page kind of a thing which could maybe feel like it takes up a lot of room uh, that was something, the excessive bookkeeping it felt like with uh, Starfleet Battles. But I don't see an energy allocation form. And again, I believe, because this is kind of on the fly, you track your energy here. So as you do things, it uses energy. But like I said, I'm not entirely sure on that. I do like the colored SSDs. I think these are kind of cool color coded, better than just plain old black and white. Just again, gives a little visual appeal, but has no effect on the game. Just kind of helps link things together. Um, but that's where I'm at right now. So this is the new new thing I'm going to try. So I'm not ignoring um, the naval stuff at all. In fact, I got a, uh, three more ships coming in. I'm, or, I've ordered the Bismarck and Scharnhorst and Prince Eugen. And that way I can do some additional tabletop battles. Just starting small, I figure just a couple ships a month. And after a while, I'll have enough to do a lot of different scenarios. Mostly I'm interested in, in uh, I guess, skirmish type things anyway. Where like my son and I will pick out a few ships and then go at it. Which is why I think he'll like something like this. Because he told me he prefers space battles. He likes the World War II stuff, but he likes space type battles better. Now, if, if you know of some games that you prefer better for spaceship combat that uses kind of like system ship displays, let me know. I did used to have Starfleet, uh, not Starfleet, but Star Blazers, the fleet battle system, and I thought those had gorgeous ship display systems, had a really nice picture of the ship. Uh, those ships look more like World War II ships in space. So that might be one I go back and revisit as well. And it is difficult to find miniatures for that, but the game does come with counters that you can print out and play. Um, but if you have some other ones, I remember there was a Leviathan from FASA games as well. I don't remember though if it had ship systems displays with the whole boxes and things like that. But again, it's just more like the, the visual appeal of having your ship and then as they take damage across things. I think that's one reason I liked uh, General Quarters. Now General Quarters 3, their ship display box is completely different. Um, it, it, that's why I was, if you've watched some of my other videos, I've said this is one reason I've liked General Quarters 3 as a rule set. Even though this doesn't have the outline of the ship, I think it would be really cool as if somebody took a paper like this put like a little black and white drawing top-down view of say what was this one the, the Ganesa now and then put kind of the boxes like this I think that'd be awesome um, if I ever got skill I would do something like that but again just because I like the uh, the boxes so if you know of any other space combat games that has ship system displays with boxes like this for it let me know I like trying out new games and since I'm a visual person, to me, this is visually appealing. Uh, anyway, just some random thoughts there. The new game I'm going to try out. I'll, I'll probably put some play stuff up in a couple weeks. It's going to take me a little while to read the rules, learn the game, play some sample stuff, and then maybe put something out for those that are interested if you want to see how the games play. Uh, even if you're not interested in seeing how the game plays, I'll put a video up anyway, <laughs> just because I want to. Uh, but other than that, thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you all later. Thanks a lot. Bye.